This is what Numbers chapter 6 says and this is a blessing uh, that Moses gave the Israelites and I'm just going to read it to you guys because I believe like no matter what you're going through today that this is the promises of God for your life, for your family. And Moses told the Israelites, may God bless you and protect you. May God make his face shine upon you and may him be gracious to you. May God look with favor on you and give you peace. Man, as we finish 2020, isn't that what we're looking for? And I believe God is so good that he is not done with you, that the best is yet to come. I do believe that. And I am so grateful for God in this place. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, we love you so very much. God, thank you. Because when we were our most sinful, you were at your most merciful, Lord. Thank you because when we were in our darkest times, God, you were faithful enough, God, that you were with us every step of the way, God. When we were, when we were just devastated by, by the pain, God, your love poured out on us, Lord. And here we are, your people, God. We need a fresh word from you this morning, Lord. I don't want to go back one more day, God, without having an encounter with your presence. Lord, I need to hear from you, God. And I pray that, that my words will be your words, God. I make myself available. I'm just an ordinary guy. That, God, but you, you love every single person in this room, every single person watching online. God, and I thank you. I thank you, Lord, because you are so, so good. And like I, this, this number said, God, we, we get a hold of those blessings, Lord. And we thank you. We thank you for who you are in our lives. Speak to us today. In Jesus' name, everybody say, amen. Amen. Can we give God a hand one more time? Last Sunday of 2020, you may be seated. You may be seated, church. And I am so grateful for this house. I am so grateful to have the pastors that I have, to have Pastor Brian as, as not just a friend, but as a mentor in my life. And the way that he, he just loves all of us. And Today is my honor and my privilege to, to be here with you guys. And uh, I know like, that, that, that in regardless to, to what you've gone through in 2020, I believe God wants to speak to each one of you guys. So I am so thankful to be here with you. Again, my name is Brian and I, I have the honor and the privilege to lead our college ministry. So if you're out there and you are in college, please make sure you come check us out every Thursday at 7.30. We meet down at Student Center. We have a lot of fun. So I like to have a lot of fun. So today is going to be fun. So let me ask you guys a question. Do you like the person you're sitting next to? Yeah? Good. Because you'll be with them for three hours. That's what Pastor Brent told me. He was like, Brian, you got three? So I was like, I'll take it, Pastor Brent. Don't worry about it. I'm just joking. I'm like, is he serious? Like, does he not got to go to Cracker Barrel for lunch? I'm just, I know you got to go to lunch. So. Again, my name is Brian. I'm from Peru. But I have a beautiful family. And I want to show you guys a picture of my beautiful family. And that's my beautiful bride, Kirsty. Uh, we've been married for eight years and we're still going strong. Uh, I pray for her. She, she needs a lot of prayer. You know, she gets to deal with me every single day. But we met down in Peru. Uh, she was a missionary to Peru and we met there. And I guess she was into brown guys, people that didn't speak her language. So I still remember like it was yesterday when she uh, proposed to me. You know, so the happiest day of my life. I'm kidding. Like this guy has some jokes. Um, and we, I just love her with all of my heart. And I have uh, my, my little guy, Noah. He is my buddy. Uh, we stay in trouble together. Uh, he is into soccer. Uh, I don't know if it's forced or it's, uh, he likes it, but he doesn't have another option. You know, he was like, Daddy, baseball. I was like, dude, baseball, really? Like, I don't know how to teach you how to play baseball. Like, basketball, like football. I was like, bro, don't you want to be different? Like, every single person, like, plays football. I was like... Soccer, that's where it's at. So I think uh, he's loving being forced to play soccer. So um, <laughs> I, uh, I'm actually forcing, please pray for him that he will actually love soccer. So just remember, yeah, put that in your prayer list. Um, and then I have my beautiful little girl, uh, Mercy. She is uh, my princess. She gets whatever she wants. And I have a, I have a problem, y'all. Like I, if you have little girls out there, if you raise girls, please let me know how you did it because... I'm like, every day, I'm like, Kirsty's like, how are you giving her candy at 7 in the morning? I was like, but do you see how cute she is? Like, 
I can give her whatever she wants, whenever she wants. That's just my problem. So if you know how to help me out, I gotta. I want to get a, a, a little a dad club, you know, like, how do we do this, guys? Like, boys are going to come and think, what am I going to do? Like, I don't want to go to prison because, you know, the guy, like, so I just, I'm trying to figure it out. I may take her to Peru and just put her, lock her down until she's 40 and then come back and then, you know. Um, but it is an honor and a privilege to be speaking to you guys the word that it's in my heart, that it's been in my heart and in my mind for the last three years of my life. And, and while I was writing it, I remember all the way back to when I started learning uh, English. You know, English is not my first language. By now, you know, I have an accent and it's not from Alabama. Okay, so it's not from, I was like, is this guy from Alabama, Louisiana? Uh, and I was like, I remember when I started learning English about six, seven years ago. I was in school in Dallas and... And I remember the professor was like, Brian, you guys, then, you guys need to read out of the King James Version. And I was like, King James Version? Like, and I would read it and I was like, thy? Like, is that a prophet? Like, thou art? Like, what? Is that like a disciple? Like, I, don't, I didn't know, you know. Like, I was like, it was the hardest times. And I would come home frustrated and I would tell Kirstie, I was like, I just don't know. Like, I just, like, I'm just still like, have you ever asked like Arkansas, like Kansas? Like, what is wrong with English? You know, like. And I'm still learning, and, and I would go back home frustrated, and Kirsty used to tell me, don't worry, Brian, it's one step at a time, one step at a time. And that is my message today, it's titled Step by Step, okay, it is not by, by that song, you know, step by step, so like, it's, it's not that song, but that's my message today, and my prayer is that it blesses me. The reality is that I always go back to this message. At the end of every year, before the next year is going to start, I will always go back to this message. And this message has the, the potential and the ability to align your heart to the heart of God for your life. So if you pay close attention and if you actually implement this, these things in your life, I know and I believe with all of my heart that this message has the ability to align your heart to the heart of God. To align your, your, your desires and your dreams to the desires and the dreams that it's in God's heart. Because the Bible says... That who is the one that is faithful enough will complete the work that he started on you. And also the Bible says that his dreams and his plans are higher than our plans, higher than our dreams. So our, our, our job as, as Christians, as a followers of Christ, as just people, is to align ourselves to the heart and the will of God. And that is where true fulfillment happens. So like I said, I titled this message Step by Step. And we're going to go and read out of the psalm. Psalm 37, this is a summary by David. And David in this psalm, is, is, is the context of this psalm is basically he's making a difference between godly people and people that are wicked. But there's two verses that really caught my attention. And li listen, and this is going to encourage you right out of the bat, okay. I don't know how good you think you're doing, but you're doing better than you think you are, okay. And I don't know how far you think you've come, but you're going to go even farther, okay. This is what David says. The Lord makes firm the steps of the one who delights in him. Okay, let's stop there. And he says, the Lord. Okay, it doesn't say your bank account, right? It doesn't say how many followers you have on Instagram. It doesn't say, uh, you know, your job status or your social status. It says the Lord. The Lord, makes firm of the, the Lord makes firm the steps of the one who delights in him. Not the one who likes you or dislikes you, but the Lord. And listen to what it says. It says, though he may stumble. It doesn't say if. It doesn't say maybe. No, it says, though he may stumble. Will not fall for the Lord upholds him with his hand. In this passage, guys, we see God loves people who delight in him. And he will hold them and he will not let them fall every step of the way. Every step of the way. How many of you guys do resolutions at the, at the beginning of each year? Raise your hand. If you're online, put it in the chat. Like, you know, like, is this a tricky question? Like, I don't know. Like, is pastors against resolutions? Like... I'm serious, like how many of you guys do resolutions? Like I start with some resolutions and you know, like remember back in 2020 at the beginning, we were all had resolutions, right? Like, oh, 2020, that's going to be the year I, I, I'm bringing my six pack back, right? Some of you guys told your wife, I was like, sweetheart, the high school years, I'm going to bring them back this year. Like, oh, just get ready. The six pack is going to come right back. All to find out that we're going to be stuck at home with a bunch of pop tarts, right? Right? Or in 2020, you were like, I'm going to be a millionaire. Oh, this is gonna this is gonna be the year I had one million in my bank account, right? Some of you guys have said like, oh, single people, right? I'm 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 finally gonna ask her on a date this year, this year. All to find out you cannot leave home, right? You're stuck. 
So we all have resolutions, and I'm not totally against resolutions. It actually gives me a path to start the year. But, but here's my resolution, okay? My resolution for 2021 is this, is to acknowledge and to recognize that every single step I take can lead me closer to Jesus. Since, okay, time out, right? Like, yeah, yeah, my resolution, my goal as a follower of Jesus is like to, to recognize and to acknowledge that I don't have to waste another step. That I don't have to waste another season. That I don't have to waste another circumstances. I believe that God is so loved that he has so much grace and so much mercy that every single step I take can lead me closer to Jesus, closer to his grace, closer to his mercy, closer to his goodness. Like I don't have to miss it. That I can actually stay in the will of God. That if he calls me that I get to go. That if he tells me go that I get to follow. That is my goal. I just don't know about you guys, but I'm tired of being stuck. I'm just tired of just not, not making any difference. And there's, there's, there's a problem going on and nobody seems to recognize it or to acknowledge, not even to address it. That we're living in, in, in a society that is just stuck. It's just stuck. We're so afraid to take steps forward. Why? Let me tell you why. Because we're looking at the future and we're like, Brian, look what 2020 did to us. I just don't know what 2021 is going to be. I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to, I'm scared. We're scared of the future. Or we're holding to the past. Brian, if you could have seen me back in my high school years. Oh, I was a quarterback. Like, I was a star. Like, those years were the best years. I didn't have to pay the bills. Like, I just, so we're in this tension in our society that we're so scared of moving forward because we're scared of the future and we're holding on into the past. And no one seems to notice it. And no one seems to address it. In our, our entire society, I work with college students. And let me tell you this. We're missing the point. Or we're so worried whether, we, whether or not we're going to miss it. And because we're so like, is this something like God wants me to do? Like... Is this the will of God for my life? And we're living in this, in this place, in this tension where like I cannot make any decisions because I'm scared whether I'm going to miss it or not. And here's a question I want to ask you guys today. Where are the steps you're taking leading you today? Like what are the steps? Are you taking these steps? Or you're, you're, uh, you're the one that is like so scared of like I just don't know if I should make this business move. Like I don't know. Where are the steps you're taking now leading you today where are they you know one of the most uh, google questions right now is uh, where am i going with my life isn't that crazy like people are actually asking the internet where am i gonna go with my life i know that may sound funny but it's an alarming statement that people are lost and here it is i have the job i want i have the career i always dreamed of I have the business that I always work hard for, but yet every time that I lay, I lay my head down in the pillow, I still ask the question, what am I doing with my life? Like every time we, we go down to it, to we, who we really are, we go back to the question, is it even worth it? it, it am I in the path of God for my life? And people are desperate, asking for questions and like, where am I going? And I don't believe for a minute that that is the will of God for your life. That he doesn't want you to be lost. There is nothing worse than being lost. And I believe that God is so good and he is so merciful that I believe that every single step you take forward, he's going to run towards you. And that every single step that you're like, God... I'm going and when I, I'm going to seek your face. That he, he's going to be so good to us that he's going to run. Brian, how do you know that? Well, look what Jeremiah 29, 13 says. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. And it's just like the good father, right? To, 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 to his son that lost everything that, 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 that the father gave him, right? He went and wasted all his money. And the Bible says that the father saw his son uh, at the distance. And when he saw them at a distance, that he ran towards him. That is the love of God for you today. That you don't have to miss another step. Because every step you take matters. Every single step you take matters. It doesn't matter how big the decisions is. It doesn't matter how small the decisions are. 
every step you take matters. Can I read you a scripture that illuminates my idea? This is scripture, it's, it's found in Mark chapter 1, verse 16 to 20. And this is Jesus starting his ministry, right? And he's, he's looking for people uh, just to, to, to start the ministry with him. And this is what he says. Look, one day as Jesus was walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew. They were throwing uh, a net into the water for they fished for a living. And Jesus called out to them and he said, come follow me and I will show you how to fish for people. And they left their nets at once. Notice that. And they followed him. A little farther up the shore, Jesus saw Zebedee's sons, uh, James and John, in a boat repairing their nets. And he called them at once. And they also followed him. And this is funny. Look, leaving their father, Zebedee, in the boat with hired men. Isn't that crazy? Like Jesus goes right and starts his ministry. And he goes to, to his disciples. And he's like, yo, follow me. I'm about to make you fishers of men. Follow me. I'm about to change your whole world. And these dudes they were like, okay follow you and he goes to, to to John and he's like hey oh, follow me and they leave their dad in their boat they ran toward Jesus Could you imagine if I would have done that to my daddy I would have gotten the biggest spanking ever could you imagine the kind of weight what kind of influence Jesus must have walked on that just all these guys all they ever knew was fishing all they ever knew, that was their family business. And can't you imagine God showing up to your, to your cubicle at, at work or to your office and be like, hey, follow me. I'm about to change your whole world. And what would you do? Right? If Jesus walked into my life, and Jesus, Jesus walked, like, come follow me. I'm like, oh, okay. Like, how about my business? Like, like how, do you, how do you tell your father-in-law, right? Like, hey, um, this random dude uh, showed up to my office today and told me to follow him, so... I'm going to be doing that. I just don't know how we're going to pay the bill. Like, how, how do you have the conversation, right? They immediately, at once, drop their nets and follow him. You're like, okay, Brian, you, you're telling me that we need to, to, to take one step at a time. And, and this is this one step and one step. And uh, I'm good with that. Okay, I'm going to follow Jesus, right? We're all good in the same page. But before you keep doing it, uh, before you keep taking steps or Jesus, there's a thing that I need to warn you with, Okay. That, that, that Jesus, it's a, there's, a, there's a tension here, okay? That before you take any other steps, there's a tension. And you need to, to, to notice the difference between two things. And there in the Bible that is full of immediacy, okay? Full of immediacy, which is the state of the condition of being immediate, right? But it is also full of gradually, which is a state of changing by small degrees, See, there's two things out here, guys, that, that we forget sometimes when we read the Bible, we're like, whoa, 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 these guys are awesome, right? Oh, the disciples, Brian, these, these disciples are great, like legends, right? Not at this point. When they got called by Jesus, at this point, they were just fishermen who no longer had a job. See, see we, we need to understand, guys, that the Bible is full of immediacy, which is like the disciples that they immediately, they became followers. But they did not become legends that day. Immediately, they followed Jesus. But gradually, they became world changers. And we need to understand that. And we got to learn that Jesus, yes, he is a God that is immediate. But also a God who is cool with gradual. But who is excited about gradual? Right? None of us. I don't like gradual. I want my prayer. If I need to pray, I need my prayer right now, right here. Lord, be a God, like you would say that you are a God of breakthrough. Well, give it to me right now. We don't like gradual, right? We are not cool with of you guys. Some of you guys are getting excited. Like, okay, I'm ready to step up. Cool, 2021 is going to be my year. Immediately, okay? Immediately, God is going to give you a vision. Immediately, God is going to give you a dream. Immediately, God is going to put his desires on your life. But we better understand and be prepared to know the gradual nature of our God. That yes, God time he's working when it doesn't seem that he's working. That he is present even when I don't feel his presence. That God is giving me breakthrough even when I don't see anything happen. That I have to go when he says go and I have to follow when he says follow. We have to learn that sometimes there is immediate breakthrough. But 
But oftentimes, there's nothing but gradual faithfulness. But this is the devil's strategy, right? The devil's strategy is to get Christians and just regular people to be so overwhelmed by the big task at hand. This is the devil. And, and I not believe, like, the devil's been doing that to you, okay? The, the we get so overwhelmed by the big task at hand. And they were like, ah, this is so big. Like, are you sure? Like, Lord, like, is that? That's not me. Pastor Brand. I think, like, you tell me that to tell Pastor Brand, right? Because he is, he is the man. He is anointed. He, he's a great communicator. He is, oh, no, no, Clint, right? Yeah, Clint, have you seen that dude play the guitar? Like, he's a great worship leader, right? Amazing. And we get so overwhelmed. And we're like, this is just so big. And the devil's charge is, is to get us to, to get so overwhelmed by the big vision and the big dreams. And they don't last because we cannot make any small decisions in the day-to-day -day things. That we forget and we're so consumed by the big thing. And we're so consumed by, by the big task that we forget that there are certain decisions that I must take right now. And all of a sudden we're finding in this, in this, in this tension, in this way, we're, we're just paralyzed. We cannot take any steps forward to Jesus because we're so scared by the bigness of our dreams. I got, I, I, it's not about how big the dreams are. It's about the steps I'm taking today that matter the most. I had a guy the other day, he said, um, a couple months back, he was like, uh, Pastor Brian, it's a college student. He was like, Brian, Pastor Brian, I want, a, I want a brand new Mercedes. I'm kidding. Why, who am I kidding? I want a brand new pickup. Right, I'm in the south, so I'm like, I want a big old pickup, like I want a truck, like F-150, King Ranch, like is that a good pickup? Like big tires, like a two box, I just don't, I don't want a pickup, so like that's not my type of car, so I don't know what a good pickup is. But like, he was like, Pastor Brian, I want a brand new car. And I was like, time out, time out, time out. How about you start taking care of your Kia Soul? Because it's pretty dirty in the inside. How about this smart car or the trashy pickup your granddad gave you? How about you start taking care of that right now? I have another dude came to me and he was like, Pastor Ryan, I want to be a millionaire. I was like, awesome, great. But how about you start paying the 20 bucks you borrowed your uncle seven years ago? Some of the single people out there, they're like, Pastor Brian. I want to get married this year. I'm tired of being a, a single like, I was just, and I was like, how about you start by being faithful to the call of God in your life because you've been cheated on that. See, we're so, we want more and more and more and more. When God is trying to tell us, what are you doing now with the things I've already given you? We're so worried about 2021, but how about we end 2020 right? Because it is not over. And let me just break it to you guys. From the 31st to the 1st. Ain't going to change a lot. We're all looking forward for 2021, right? I just don't know if it's going to change a lot. All God wants us to do is be faithful with the things he's already given us. So my question today to you is, what are you going to do today? What are you going to do today? If you're watching online, what are we going to do today? What are the things that God has already entrusted me with? What are the steps I'm taking today leading me towards? It's just going to be really difficult to change overnight. So maybe God is giving you the big dream. Not so that you can skip the entire process. But so that you can start now and be faithful to the word of God. Be faithful to the church and get closer to Jesus. Has there been anything, anything going on in your life right now where you've been so scared by, by the bigness of the dream and the vision that you just stop? But what if we finally realize, guys, that, that God has not asked us to save the world. He already did. He hasn't asked you to lead anything. The only thing he's required to you is the, the title that has been given to you, a follower of Jesus. See, Jesus is not calling you to lead the way. He's calling you to follow him. He has not asked you to save the world. He already has. He just wants you to be faithful with the things he's giving you now. Following him one step at a time, day in, day out. 
I'm going to bring Taylor. Taylor, could you call me here? Um, get up for Taylor, by the way. He's one of my best friends. And in this case, he's going to be Jesus, right? You're pretty cute looking, so I think like you're in the image of God. So Jesus said, follow him, right? So my job as a follower of Jesus Christ, I'm going to follow him, right? And I'm in my journey, and I just accepted Jesus, and it's amazing. And all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, Jesus, look at this it's a relationship. He's cute, Jesus. I don't know what my parents said, but he has a lot of potential, Jesus. I think this is better. So you can't follow me, Jesus. This is better for me. And Jesus is like, and this doesn't relationship doesn't, doesn't work the way you thought it was going to work. And you're like, why, Lord, have you forsaken me? Where are you? And Jesus is like, come to me, follow me. You're like, oh, I'm sorry, Jesus. I'm going to follow you, Jesus, now. And you start following Jesus back again, right? And you're like, oh, hey, Jesus, but look at this. Are you sure this is not the best way? Like, I believe this is the best thing for my life. Jesus, come on. I know better. Jesus is like, and this doesn't work out. We're like, Lord, why? And we're living in this, in this circle. We're like, why is my life not working? Where are you, Jesus? Where the only thing that Jesus has asked us to do is follow him. And one step at a time. One step at a time. I'm going to follow Jesus. I'm going to get closer. I'm going to get in the word. And I'm going to be like, his plans are higher than my plans. And here, guys, is where true fulfillment happens. Thank you, bro. I appreciate it. We've got to understand that God is not asking us to lead anything. So the pressure is off. When did we begin to think that it was about us? When did we begin to think that life is about me, myself, and I? All Jesus has asked us to do is like follow me every step of the way. Every step of the way. Some people say that I have a lot of passion and, and that there's... That, that seems like my life is figured out. And honestly, guys, I look back at my life. I don't deserve any credit. Like, college students say it all the time. Brian, how did you get what you have? Like, how do you have the family that I have? How did you, how did you find your, your calling? And it was, by the way, this is not fulfillment for me. I never asked for this. If you would have said to 17-year-old to Brian back in the day and you were like, Brian, you're going to be uh, in a pulpit with a mic in your hand and speaking to a lot, of, uh, a lot of people, I would have laughed at your face. And I would say, bro, you're crazy. Let me just kick my ball. I'm going to play soccer for the entire life. Like, that's cool, but I'm just going to do this, okay? Like, go ahead. Like, I, I just don't want that. This was never the goal. But, but am I in the place where I'm supposed to be? Absolutely. Am I fulfilling the God-given dream and calling in my life? Absolutely. Have I ever done anything to deserve it? Absolutely not. How did you do it, Brian? I just followed Jesus one step at a time. He did the rest. All this credit. There is nothing for me. I did nothing to deserve it. I just followed Jesus. So you, do you want to fulfill the God-given calling, the God-given dream in your life? I don't care if you're young or you're older. God is not done with you. All he wants us to do is just follow him one step at a time. One step at a time. Day in and day out. And yes, fulfillment comes when I see one of my college students get saved. Fulfillment comes when I see my kids every single night in my home. Fulfillment comes when, 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 when I see my college students fulfill their God-given dream, which is happening a lot of times. There are a lot of my college students that are, that are opening businesses and they are, are, are just uh, going after their dreams. And that is what brings satisfaction to my life, just to be in there and cheering them on every step of the way. Then, yes, how did I get here? I don't know. I just follow Jesus. Some of you guys have big to-do lists, right? And that's, there's nothing wrong with that. But it's got to start with our number one thing. And that is to obey in Jesus and what he wants me to do now. We're all so worried about like, Jesus, what do you want me to do tomorrow? No, no, no. What do you want me to do now? Because every step I take matters. Gosh, you're so smart. I just found this out, by the way. It's crazy, right? Um, the, the, a couple months ago, I finally figured out how smart she is. And this is what she told me. She told me, Brian, um, when she wants me to clean the entire house, she starts with the one thing. She's like, Brian, could you organize your shoes? I'm like, okay. Friday, day off, right? I have nothing to do. I'm going to go clean my shoes. Okay. 
just 30 minutes, right? Just start. I have a lot of shoes. That was my 30 minutes. Like, 30 minutes to organize your shoes? Yes, I have a lot of them. So I'll organize my shoes, and while I'm organizing my shoes, oh, I'll notice, oh, the floor is dirty. I got to clean the floor. So when I go and clean the floor, I go start cleaning the floor, right? And then when I'm cleaning the floor, I'm like, oh, the counters are dirty too. I'm going to clean the counters. Start cleaning the counters. And when I'm cleaning the counters, oh, the dishes, the dishes needs to be made. I'm going to make the dishes. And I'm like five hours into it, right? And I turn around and there is Kirsty drinking her Diet Dr. Pepper, looking at Instagram. And all of a sudden the whole house is clean and both cars are clean. But she knew if she just gets me to do the one thing. And that is what God wants us to do. He wants us to stay t- taking care of the things that are right now. And all of a sudden you're like, oh, God, I've been forgiven. Wow. And all of a sudden the person that hurt you, it is not that hard to forgive them because you finally realize, oh, I've been forgiven. So forgiving this person is not making any damage to, to them. It's making me damage in their heart. So I'm not going to forgive them. And all of a sudden you start realizing that there are so many things to take care of. But you started with the one thing and that is what God wants us to do right now again my question is what are you doing today what are you going to do today are you going to save the world or are you going to follow Jesus so three things and I'm going to close this up three things if you're interested in on stepping it up there's three things that you need to be aware of okay number one Jesus will invite you okay the invitation it's open to every single person one of you guys. Whether you want to come to the party, that's up to you. The invitation, it's open. Jesus will invite you. See, remember, he told the disciples, follow me, right? The invitation was open. They decided to show up. They showed up. Jesus said, come follow me. And they say, okay, what? we'll do that. He will invite you. He's going to include you. But whether you want to show up to the party, that is up to you. Jesus cannot force you to do that. Could you imagine if the fisherman would have said, ah, I'll consider it. I'll go talk to my wife, Jesus. But oh, let me pray about it. Like you're going to pray to Jesus? About it. No, no. They followed him. The invitation is open to everyone. Whether you want to accept the invitation, that's up to you. The second one is this. Jesus will disrupt you. And you're like, oh, Time, Brian, what are you talking about? Yeah, yeah, see, see, after the invitation, Jesus said to the disciples, follow me. It followed to their God-given calling, right? He says, I'm about to make you a follower of fishers of men. It didn't just stay in the invitation. Jesus said, follow me, I'm about to change your entire world. And that is what we have the most tension in our lives, isn't it? See, I'm here to remind yourself today that Jesus came to make peace in your life, not to negotiate for it. He will disrupt you. And this is the gospel. It's the most disrupted callings of all times. Come follow me. What's cool? The invitation follows. Oh, by the way, I'm about to make you fishermen of people. Completely change everything about their lives. All they ever wanted to do, all they ever wanted to be is just now it's gone. Jesus, like our plan was to be fishermen for our entire lives, to, to grow the family business, to, to sell fish. And you're telling me now that that is gone, that it's over. My plan back in the day was just to kick a ball. And now you're telling me, Jesus, that I have to go to a foreign country. By the way, I never had American dreams, so I was just wanting to stay in Peru. But I'm like, are you telling me to go away from my family? And then when we were with Kirsty's family, you told us to go to Columbus, like a city that we've never been to. Why? said follow me I'm about to change your entire life so if you wanted to step it up you you have to believe that you're invited but also be prepared that God is about to change some mindsets that God will change some things in the inside because he wants us to he wants to change us from the inside out he wants to to change things in your life and it only happens by disrupting us by changing things from the inside because he loves you and he loves you too much to leave you where you are 
And the circumstances that you've gone through in 2020, the circumstances that you've gone through 2019, 18, you can take it all the way back. It's been because God is trying to mold you. 2020 was a, a really hard year for me. I went from uh, um, not losing any family members to losing uh, two of my bestest friends, my grandmas. And I lost one, my first one back in June. And um, I lost my, last, my other grandma um, three weeks ago. And it honestly was one of the hardest <coughs> times in my life. And you're like, okay, I don't get it. Like, you got to understand that my grandma, the, the, the past three weeks ago, she's just the one that I believe it. I am the man I am today. I have the family I have today because of her prayers. So if you're a grandmother and praying for your grandkids, don't stop praying because they worked. It worked. It worked. And I, I know that she prayed for me every single day and every time that I needed some help and some encouragement, she was always there. And I was just angry and I was frustrated and I was like, why? And I was asking this question. I was like, why God? Why me? Why her? Like, why did you have to take her? And I was so angry and I was like, so many emotions in my life. And I just couldn't even go to her funeral because I just couldn't. And I was so upset and I was like, why is this happening to me? Like, have you ever asked that question? Why? And as I was talking to my uncle in Peru, he's a, he's a pastor in, to the jungle in Peru. And, and, and he was there with my dad and we were just having a conversation. And I was so frustrated. And I was like, why? Why? I was like, why did, why did God, why if I pray for her to be healed, why didn't God answer my prayers, right? I'm just being vulnerable to you guys because pastors here, we have our faults as well. We have our doubts. And I was like, I pray for my grandma to be healed. And yet she is here in the casket. I just don't understand it. Why did God have to do that? And my uncle shared with me one of the things that have transformed the way I view my relationship with the Lord. And I, my prayer is that it helps you as well too today. He says something that totally transformed my life. And as I was asking why, and he stopped me and said, Brian, don't you ever ask why. I said, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? He said, Brian, we are the clay. He is a potter. The clay doesn't tell the potter what to do. And I've read that verse thousands of times, by the way. But that day it hit me and I finally understood that I am the clay that is being molded by the mighty potter. And the potter knows my best interest. I've just got to let them, i just got to let him do whatever he wants to do in my life. You are the clay. He is the potter. Your job is to follow Jesus one step at a time, day in and day out. And trust that God knows best for your life. I'm not trying to tell you that this message is, oh yeah, go ahead and step, step up, step it up. Do it by yourself. Do it by your own efforts. The reality is, guys, that we cannot step, take steps without the power and the ability to follow Jesus. We need Jesus in the equation, okay? This is not a message, go step it up, do it by your own efforts, do it by your own energy. No, no, no. I'm trying to tell you that. that I'm not telling you tomorrow, go step it up and do it by your own power. See, the disciples did not drop their nets and started following Twitter. They started following the Messiah. They didn't just walk into the unknown, right? They didn't just leave their, their things into the unknown. No, no. They walked with Jesus into the unknown. Big difference. That in this equation, in these day-to-day things, we need Jesus in our lives. And guys, I just, I just don't want to look back in my life and, and say, where did time go? I don't want to look back in my life and have so many regrets. I believe that God is so good that every single step I take matters. And every single step I, step I take in 2020 and 2021 can lead me closer to Jesus. And I don't want to look back in my life and I was like, I wasted my time. I wasted my energy. My job this year is to follow Jesus.
just need to be known. I want my kids to know. Oh, my dad was just a follower of Jesus. That's what I want. My desire is to be known as the guy that followed Jesus. That's it. And rather than pray, well, God, use me. How about we start praying now? God, help me follow you. And rather than start praying, uh, because listen, guys, we cannot, it would be impossible to follow God and not be used by Him. And rather than be praying, God, give me breakthrough, how about we start help, praying, God, help me follow you better. God, give me more money. No, 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 help me follow you better. God, give me another opportunity. I've already have. Follow me. I say yes to God 10 years ago. Back in my small little church in Peru, uh, there was this uh, missionary uh, to Afghanistan. She was sharing her story, and I didn't hear anything, to be honest with you. I didn't pay attention to the entire sermon. Um, uh, and, and when she gave the invitation, I immediately sensed the presence of God in my life, and I stood up, and I was crying in the entire church. It was about 40 of them. They immediately threw up. Is that Brian Chavry, like, standing up? Like, is that the dude that nobody believed in? Like, is that the guy? To the, to, to the stage and it was just me and, and I was just crying and I remember so clearly saying God whatever you want me to do I'll do it I don't know what that is help me follow you better and since that day my life has not been the same I can look back in my life and see things that God has done through the pain because what's in those disruptions and those big things that we're, where God took away that I saw his most grace and his most his love and leads me to my third and last point you're like Brian okay why does God follow, follow, call me to follow him and why is he going to disrupt me because he wants to use you Jesus will use you Jesus will use you see he's not just calling you to call you so he's not just going to disrupt you to disrupt you or to hurt you but he's going to do all those things it works on succession because he wants to use you see the, the the changing of this house it is because God is is using our pastor and our leadership but he also wants to use you world transformation does not just happen by one man and one person it happens by a passionate followers of Jesus are willing to you today don't go into 2021 not knowing where you will spend eternity and that is a really dangerous game you can play pastor Brent says this all the time don't play roulette games with your life because you never know you're not guaranteed tomorrow so my question for some of you guys so what are you going to do today and there's a the Holy Spirit talking to you and you've been acknowledged and you've been known that the invitation is open but you've not been just showing up to the party and you haven't fully recognized the invitation is there and you've never accepted, but maybe that's a step you've got to take today. Whether you're here in the room or whether you're watching online, the invitation is open. Whether you're going to show up for it, it's up to you because Jesus already done his part. He already sent his son. He didn't have to. He didn't have to come down. He chose to. He was a volunteer because he loved you. And that was the only way for us to have an eternity for us to have purpose. And he came down and lived a sinless life, something that you will never do, nor I. He did that and he did something that he didn't deserve and they spat on him. And then he died on a horrible death. And his final word says, it is finished. And by that immediately, the power of sin, the 
hold us to 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 a, a dead uh, nature. It's now gone. So the invitation is up to you. He resurrected from the dead. He took the keys from hell so that you can have a purpose, so that you can have an eternity, not just here on earth, but in heaven with our Creator. So the invitation is open. Whether you're gonna show up to the party, it's up to you. All you've got to do is confess that you're a sinner. We all are. And the second thing is to accept Jesus into your heart and recognize that He is Lord. And then just, just follow Him. You don't have to do anything else. You don't have to change the world. You just gotta follow Him. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, there are so many people in this room, Lord, that we've experienced so many. God, that I will never be able to, to do it by my own ability. I try so hard, and I fail so hard, and I just cannot do it by my own powers. I need you today. I confess that you're my Lord and Savior. Please forgive me of my sin, and I recognize that you're no longer my Lord. Please take me as yours. I am yours, and you are forever mine. Come live in my life. back into worship and um, I encourage you to finish 2020 the right way and if that's you and you pray that prayer would you come and let one of these couples know this is not so that we can put a spotlight on you this is not so we can check out a box in our numbers no this is so that we can just celebrate what God has started in your life and I believe you take one step today to, towards Jesus he's going to come and run towards you and show you the path you must take to fulfill the God-given call in your life and if that's you online and that you're like, I'm ready to give my life to the Lord, you can text the number here below and just say, I pray that prayer. We just want to help you guys understand and know what's your next step as a follower of Jesus. So when we go back into worship, don't be afraid. Every single time Jesus called somebody, he opened, he called them open and publicly. We could, we just told them. And, and, and Jesus also said, if you deny me in front of men, I will deny you in front of my father. So if that's you, the Holy Spirit is talking to you. Don't hesitate and come to one of these couples. Don't feel embarrassed. We just want to celebrate the work that God has started in your life. It's been an amazing pleasure and honor to be with you guys this morning. So how about we stand and we go to the Lord in worship. May His favor be upon you in a thousand generations. And your family and your children and their children and their children. Thank you for visiting us today. And if this ministry has touched your life in any way, please send us your story to I am at CascadeHills.com. And if you'd like to help support this ministry financially and help us spread the word of Jesus Christ around the world, you can go to CascadeHills.com or our Cascade Hills app and select the Give button. We hope you enjoyed the services today. Tune in next week for another great message.